Well, in any case, um, let me flip this thing around. Can I flip this around? I can flip it around. All right. So here's what we got. I was walking down the street this morning and I noticed this bike sitting by the trash can. I knocked on the door and I was like, hey, uh, you throwing that thing away? I said, yeah. So I was like, all right, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to snatch it. So uh, I took the ball, bike back and there it is. So I think from what I can tell, this is a mid 70s Schwinn Le Tour, as you can see, and it's kind of an interesting bike. Uh, I want to say this was in between a 74, 75, or 76, simply because from what I can tell from photos, uh, Schwinn changed their logos on the frame, so it just says Schwinn on the bottom tube and not Schwinn Le Tour, which, again, I think they only did it here in 74, 75, 76. So it's pretty sure it's one of those three years. It's, it's a steel frame, so pretty heavy. Schwinn's like, hey, it's a lightweight frame that weighs 32, 33 pounds. Yeah, that's a lot for uh, a road bike, but you got to figure it's all steel too, the whole frame, steel. The wheels are steel. I believe the crank is aluminum and it's three-piece. The wheels themselves are 27-inch uh, wheels, so it's like 630 millimeters. I only know this because it's stamped right on the side of the tire here, right? Right there somewhere. Is this going to focus? It's not going to focus. But in any case, it says 630 by 32. So uh, 32 millimeter wide tires, which is about standard for a road bike. Uh, but 27 inch, I think, I think is kind of an oddball size these days. Most bikes are either uh, 27 and a half or 29 and 26 has kind of been on its way out for the past couple of years. So yeah, I couldn't just let this thing go to the trash, especially in the condition that it is in. Whoever had this really kept it in decent shape. I mean, let's just look at just the forks themselves, the hubs pretty clean. I mean, there's some minor surface, uh, what, uh, not rust, but like some surface, um, whatever. I'm not going to say rust, but it could use a little bit of a polish job. Uh, it's got these interesting center pull brakes with the exposed cable here. Um, the, uh, the wheels themselves have these gum wall tires that are dry rotted. So I'm going to have to replace these, but look, uh, <laughs> The caliper pads uh, look like they're in really good shape. It also has this really interesting quality to the build, say, like the components. You know, this isn't re re really returning very well because I'm, I definitely need to get uh, new cables. It's just hanging it up. But like the texture on the levers themselves and this little kind of, I don't know if this is copper or whatever this finish is. It just looks super premium, right? Uh, it's also interesting that's got the uh, dual lever, so you can hold on the top of the bar and then also hit the brakes using those, which is pretty neat. I haven't seen that on road bikes for a while uh, since most of them just have the hoods. Um, what else? It is a really super narrow bar, so uh, this stuff is just baked super hard. It might as well be plastic. Uh, interesting end caps, but yeah, nice butted frame. Um, the uh, the connectors for the cable routing is all like multiple multi piece, right? So you can see this piece of aluminum here. Uh, this bracket attaches, put holds uh, the cables in place. So this is removable. Same thing for the um, bottle cage. I'm I'm I don't know if this bottle cage was designed by Schwinn or not, but interesting. Um, the cassette, uh, not the cassette, <laughs> the front derailleur is not Shimano. It's like, sh it's, it's Schwinn's own brand. I think it was like a GT 420 and a GT 450 or something front and rear. And, and actually you can see right here, GT, GT 450. There you go. Um, I want to say this is a 52 large and a 39 middle. And then the back range, it's only a 10 speed. So it is a 14 and 
maybe 14, 17, whatever, up to 28. <laughs> Even the kind of the dork disc they call it these days is metal. So that's that's super interesting as well. Um, even the tires, I think these tires might even be original. You can see they see, see they say Schwinn. And just about everything on this thing says Schwinn approved. Schwinn approved, which is um interesting way that they've marketed themselves. Uh so here's another look at the rear derailleur that GT420 as they call it. Still got the uh, reflector on the rims, on the spokes. Uh, it is a quick release hub, um, front and rear. And looking at the back center poles, and it's got this reflector right on the left there. I'm pretty sure this is a different seat, different saddle even. Uh, that one looks a little bit out of place. Also, uh, what else was I going to say? It's interesting. I, they got this interesting finish here on the top of the fork, like this crown or something going on there. Um, really kind of cool to see what they were doing with bikes in the 70s. I guess this is my first time really up to, up close to one of these bikes, which I, I, I'm guessing is probably or was probably a high end at the time. Um, interesting mechanics for the shifters not that i haven't seen these before but it's the first time actually like with my hands on one uh so that's kind of cool um so i i guess at this point i'm just curious what i'm going to do with it and i'm not really sure it would be kind of cool to have a road bike in the stable as well but i know if i keep this i'm going to do something modern to it and I, I don't know what that is i'll probably keep um the brakes on here are the same, the rims the same, because I don't know what options are there. Clearly, I need different tires for it. Uh, 32s, um, that's probably just standard. I'd probably see if I can find another set, another set of 27 by 32s. It looks like it has clearance for, you know, maybe a bit more. I don't know if a 38 will fit back there, uh, if that even makes sense. But even beyond that, the size, this frame is huge. Um, the the measurement from the bottom bracket to the top bar alone uh i think it was 20 where's my where's my measuring tape uh it's over here i'm gonna grab it real quick i want to say it was like 28 inches or something like that here i'm gonna just grab my tape and here center center of the bottom bracket right there center of the bottom bracket to the top tube is yeah right about 25 inches or so 20 yeah 24 and a half 25 so that's a pretty big frame i think at least just eyeball and i haven't i haven't actually sat on it and also uh the top bar spans about 23 inches as well a reach if i'm going by where the saddle position is um approximately over the bottom bracket the reach on this thing is right about 500 um millimeters so yeah i'm not sure what size bike this is but it's it's big uh what else do we have here yeah just uh just an interesting just an interesting bike um a little bend to the bars i'm not sure how wide they actually are they can't be that wide because you know they weren't doing wide bars back then but just for kicks yeah about 300 right hood to hood <laughs> if we're gonna if we're gonna do that is about mm, 340 ish we'll call it 340 so interesting but yeah if i keep it uh definitely gonna put new cables on there that's a no-brainer new tires no-brainer and probably a new saddle for sure. Um, and who knows what else? I probably need to or want to rewrap this bar, but um, I don't know if I can find some like Schwinn owners group uh, to maybe give some insight as to um, really what this bike is worth and what to do with it. All right. Thanks for watching. I'm going to wrap this up. More on this later.